we're getting into a conversation that I'm looking forward to very, very much. And for some reason, this might be the first time I've actually had an interview like this with our next guest. We're talking about our personality profile featured guest today. She is a designer extraordinaire. She's also a journalist by training. Many people might not know this. There's so many facets to this woman. She's a dynamic individual, and she's going to tell us all about her story and her rise to success. Her name is Selena Beba Kumensa, and she's our guest for personality profile today. She's also my twin. <laughs> Good morning, Sally. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. We're gonna, we have like girl time live on TV today. I know. Yeah. It's been a while. It ha I know. So I, knew like say that. I knew you were going to say that. It's like we're catching up on TV. Yeah. yeah. How are you? I'm fine. I'm great. How are you? I'm well. I'm excited about this conversation oh, so, so we can talk about everything you've been up to. And, and we're also going to dig into your life as well. Okay. Yes, the life, the life of <laughs> Selena Beb. Okay, so right. Sally, let's get right into it. Okay, talk to us about your childhood and upbringing. Where were you born? I was born in Accra. Okay. Yes, I was born in Accra, precisely Ridge Hospital. <laughs> Wait, I was also born in Accra. Really? Ridge. Yeah. So you were really twins. Yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, okay. So you were born at so Ridge Hospital. I was born at Ridge Hospital. Yeah. yeah. Um, both my parents were public servants, so. Okay. They moved around the regions. So I, I, um, I was born in Accra, and then when I was two years old, my dad was transferred to Tamale, the northern region. Oh. Yeah, in 1981. Okay. So um, we lived in Tamale for six years, and then oh. from there we went to the Volta region, and we were there as well for about four years. So my, most of my childhood was in um, the northern Tamale, region the northern region, and Volta, Volta region. region. So you were a bit of a nomad during your younger years. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember life in Tamale at all? I do, I do. When we left there, I was, I think, eight years old. So okay. I okay. quite, yeah, I remember a few things and some people and, yeah. Did you learn the language? The language. I could speak a little bit of Hausa, but really? now, yeah, now I really can. I can do some small, a little bit of um, some insults. Oh! <laughs> Why do people always you remember know, that? Why and then greetings, you know, yes. if you greet me, I can respond. And I do understand perhaps about... Okay. 30 or 40 percent but oh, yeah that's not bad okay all right so it was quite a happy childhood mm -hmm. it was um, um interesting getting to know different cultures the northern mm -hmm. way of life and then when we went to the water region it was a little bit there was some difference in the way oh, things yeah. were done there difference in the language okay. and then you have to change schools so i changed schools a couple of times okay. growing up but it was it was quite a happy childhood actually okay. yeah my parents were the type that um, when we were young, they, they provided everything for us. So okay. I remember, I always say that, I always thought my dad was so rich. It was when I grew up that I realized that actually, you know. It was a lot of sacrifice. It was a lot of sacrifice yeah. and he tried his best to give us a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, perhaps he wasn't as rich as I thought. But yeah. that is how he made us feel because he provided everything, everything for us, made us feel very comfortable. How many siblings do you have? I have five siblings, mm -hmm. a lot of brothers. I have four <laughs> brothers <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> and one sister. Okay. Yes. yes. Nice. Okay. It, so it was nice growing up with uh, in a house a with large full of family. people, and my parents took care of many people. So we grew up with cousins and aunties and uncles. Yeah. Even now, <laughs> you have a big family. We have yeah. big family. We have lots of people with us. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So Northern Volta. Yes. And, and then we moved back to Accra. Moved back to Accra. Yes. Okay. I think it was in 91, 91 or ninety two. So I was in secondary school then when we moved back to Accra. Okay. And Which so school? I went to Ola Girls Secondary School. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, hey, let me say Maoli before my um, <laughs> Omsu people <laughs> get upset. Okay. So I actually started from Maoli school. I went to Maoli school for a year. Okay. But I didn't like it. And um, why, d why didn't you like Maoli school? Okay. So this was in 1989. All the, all the old Maolians are, are <laughs> watching you now. <laughs> my like, dad hey, is an old Maolian. And he made sure all of us went to Maoli school, even if it was just for a year. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I didn't like Maoli school at the time because it was overcrowded. This was in 89, and they it had was a last, back then? Yes, they had a last badge of the old system. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, okay, and yes. I wasn't even supposed to be part of it. That, that was the transition <laughs> was from exactly. old system to the new JHS, So a lot SHS. of parents made their children write a common entrance. Yes. I was coming just yes. when I was in class five, ten mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so I was jammed, and so it was overcrowded, because okay. a lot of people passed as well, fortunately yeah. or unfortunately. And I remember some of my mates sleeping on the floor, Yes, wow. I was on, I had a, a bed, top bed, but I had to share with somebody. Like Imagine the same the, bed? Yes. Those twin beds we sleep Those in Those twin school. beds. I still hey, remember that girl. She was called Maupemo. <laughs> <laughs> I had to share hey. with her. Really? Yes. 
That's yes. like a no-no in school, though. Like, you're not supposed to share beds with anybody. I mean, for so many reasons. But we, but we you were, had because to. the school was overcrowded. It was wow. oversubscribed. There were so many people that had passed, because a lot of people were jammed, wanting just like to myself. Stay in the old system. Wanting to stay in the old system. Yeah, I remember my sister even had to sleep on the floor. She couldn't even get a bed, you wow. know. So, uh, so we didn't like it, both my sister and I. So okay. after a year, my dad moved us to, to Ola, Ola Girls. girls which wasn't as... As crowded, crowded no. Okay. With okay. all I had my own bed. <laughs> it was nice. Okay, okay. And, um, and we're Catholics as well. So mm -hmm. we felt like being a Catholic school, it would be better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and Mali was mixed and Ola Mali's is girls. Mixed. Ola is a girls school. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> Tell us about the Ola experience. So yes. you're in a girls, all girls school mm -hmm. now. What, what's it like? I mean, we have similar experiences, but Ola... Oh, that was that? amazing at the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's still amazing now. But uh, back then, it was really, really good. Um, we're getting great results for our O11 and A level. Um, the food there wasn't that bad. It was much better than Maoli school. Oh. Accommodation situation was a lot better. Everybody had their own bed. There was nobody sharing <laughs> a bed or having to, you know, sleep on the floor and all that. Yeah. And um, it was an exciting time. I got to meet new friends. They were all nice. I got to become even more Catholic. <laughs> I yeah, know, right. Um, yeah. I became a master. I was assistant chapel prefect. So wow. yeah, my time in Ola was really nice. You, you were very. Those active. were some golden days. Yes, yes, yes. I was. Oh, you were, <laughs> as you still are now. Okay, let's fast, fast forward a bit. So you finished Ola. Yeah. Um, sixth form. What's after that? And then I went to England. Okay. What, yes. Why um, England. I did my national service, mm -hmm. and uh, Where then did you I, do your national service. Hmm. MDPI <laughs> near the ministries. MDPI. Yes. Don't ask me. I forgot what it stands for, but it's under the UN. Oh. Yeah, oh, it's okay. one of the UN programs, MDPI. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's why I did my national service. And then I went to England the, a year after. Okay. So I finished in 96. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I moved to England in 97. Yes, to go and study. <laughs> yes. And what <laughs> happened in England? <laughs> oh, Inquiring okay. minds want to know. <laughs> that is a topic I do not enjoy talking about, but... <laughs> I do have to, because it's part of my story. It's, it's your story. So, yeah. So, um, after sixth form, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, around the age of 14, 15, I watched the very first Oprah Winfrey show. Mm -hmm. My sister, mm -hmm. and watched, mm -hmm. she had been watching the Oprah Winfrey show, and okay. she lost a lot of weight. And I, I came home from school one day, and I saw my sister change. And I said, what happened? She said, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> so, I said, who is Oprah? Then she told me, there's this um, talk show host. And she impacts life, and she's so inspiring. Mm -hmm. And Oprah herself had lost weight at the time. Yeah, so I started watching Oprah, and I just fell in love with her. Yeah. I love the way she yeah. controlled the audience, the way she conducted the interviews. And I thought, I want to be like this woman. Mm -hmm. And so obviously that meant I had to go into journalism, you know. So okay. I had in mind, OK, maybe do broadcast journalism and all that. But my father was very persuasive. Mm -hmm. He felt... Um, I was quite smart and I was very, I liked arguing <laughs> and I always win every argument. So my dad said, you'll be a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, and I always tell people he didn't force me, but I was encouraged and persuaded. And right. um, because I wasn't so sure if, I mean, I loved Oprah and I wanted to be on TV, really. I didn't really want to be a journalist, to be honest. I just wanted to be on TV, <laughs> have my own talk show like Oprah, you know, as an impressionable teenager. So when my dad put a lot thing into my head, I thought, okay, law is prestigious. Mm -hmm. Let me do it, you yes. know, and then. Um, I always say one day when I go on the KSM show, I'll tell him. I remember I used to listen to KSM a lot back then. He was yeah. on Vibe FM doing this um, morning talk show on Saturdays, and he was always motivating the youth. So I remember one day I called him, and I said, ah, my dad wants to take me to England to study law. I don't want to. I want to be Oprah Winfrey. Wait, I want to be actually journalism. called into the yes, show? Yes, I called. Oh, KSM even invited me. I went to Vibe FM. At, uh, Are you serious? Down, met him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, I, I bumped into him at Metro TV a few years ago, but he didn't remember me. <laughs> but I couldn't tell him the full story. I'm sure if I'd explained it, he would have remembered me okay. anyway, because I've changed a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a lot smaller back so then. <laughs> so, so I remember it was case that told me, you know what? Law is one thing when you study, you can go into so many other things. You mm -hmm. can even go into um, um, journalism and do, you know, cover law, legal yes, yes. issues, become a legal journalist and all that. So... It was KSM that made me this, uh, accept my dad's offer studying law. Okay. I remember. I mean, he, he, he advised me he advised. anyway. Right. And uh, a lot of research for my father. So I did it. But it wasn't for me, Kokri. Yeah. I just didn't enjoy studying law. I, I found it too boring, <laughs> tedious, a lot of reading, <laughs> a lot of work. Every day you have to do your tutorials. You just can't slack. Law yeah. is one of those things that no matter how intelligent you are, if you're not reading your law cases, you're not going for classes, you're not going to say. I think a lot of people, you know, you hear a lot of young people saying they want to be lawyers. And I think they're just, they're caught up in the image of being a lawyer without knowing the, the work 
exactly. that goes into it. And I mean, there are some people who are cut out for it, but as you said, it's not for anyone. I remember when I was considering it's going not for to everybody. law school, people told me, don't do it. You will hate it. And I was like, really? They were I like, hated don't it. do it. You honestly. will hate it. I mean, there but are certain aspects of the law. I, I enjoyed criminal law. Yeah. 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 I found that very interesting. I like the, the criminal law shows. Yeah. I like you know, criminal like, law. And I loved international <laughs> law as well. Mm -hmm. But um, the rest of it, eh, European law especially, so boring. So, you uh, see okay. the textbook cook me. <laughs> so, yeah. I, so, I struggled with the law degree. I didn't like it. And eventually, my dad realized that that wasn't my calling and perhaps I'll excel at something else. I mean, it was difficult for him at the time. He mm. felt like I'd wasted money and time and all that. And it took years for him to actually come to come terms around. with the father. I'm yeah. not going to be a lawyer because he was so <laughs> <laughs> fixated on I, Selena I, I is going to be a lawyer. You know? Yeah, you I was mean. supposed to be the lawyer of the family. But yeah, yeah. sorry, dad. Like but I know me. he's proud of me now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now because, he's very proud of me. Because and, uh, you've accomplished so much yeah. in your calling. So after the degree we'll level, I, I, I had to tell him, I just can't do this can't anymore. Do and your dad is Ambassador Beba Kumensa. He used to be ambas Ghana's ambassador to the Vatican. <laughs> yes. That's huge. See how I mean, Catholic we are. See how Catholic, I know. <laughs> you now we know why I had to go to a Catholic school. You know, anyway. Okay, so yeah. back to you. So you decided mm -hmm. not to pursue law. Yeah. What did you do? So, um, initially, I was told, okay, you're left to your own devices. <laughs> we had a plan for you. You're supposed to go and study law. You say you don't want to continue anymore. Okay. You know, so decide what you want to do and then find your own fit. So, mm -hmm. a couple of years, for a good five or six years, I was just doing odd jobs here and there in England, trying to, you know, figure out, do I really want to do this journalism thing? And if I'm going to do it, do I do it in England or come back home and all that? And so I remember working for a financial company called ICS in London. And then I met this uh, young man. He's called Eric Osei. Okay. Hello, Eric, if you're watching me. He's now a pastor in Kumase. Oh. But we worked in the same <laughs> office. And Eric worked for Rainbow Radio in London. Okay. You know, we have Rainbow in Ghana now. Yeah. So Eric um, had a gospel show. And, I, you know, I always used to joke around. I'm like, Eric, why don't you, you know, get me on your show? I can guest present with you. You know, I have a face for TV and voice for radio. So the, oh, the whole office used to call me the girl with a face for TV, TV and, and voice, voice for, radio. for radio. So one day Eric said, okay, come, come with me to the studio. So I started guest presenting with Eric and I thought, oh, this is not bad. I quite like this. People will call in and they say, oh, we love Selena's voice. Okay. She makes your show more interesting and all that. <laughs> so I wasn't getting paid. It was even unofficial, but... He always get me to come into the studio with him. And that's when my love for the media okay. or broadcast okay. journalism really arose. And I mm. thought, okay, I can actually make a career of this. So um, I, I, I called my mom and my auntie one day. I said, please talk to daddy. I want to come back to Ghana, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> he, he was that upset with me. He didn't even want me to wow. return. I said, I want to come back. I want to start all over again. I, I promise I'll put myself through school again. And this time I'm going to concentrate, make sure, okay. you know, I do well and all that. So he finally accepted and said, come back. So okay. in 2008, the prodigal daughter returned to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> I was forgiven. And I was, you know, it was all love. Welcome you know. with open arms. Welcome with open yeah, arms and all exactly. that. So I came back and then uh, within two weeks, yes. um, I enrolled at the GBC training school. GBC. GBC. I was trained at GBC. And then I, I started a top-up degree course in communications as okay. well. And so I worked for GBC. I was employed after the training. Mm -hmm. um, for four years. What, I was was li what was life at GBC like? <laughs> life at GBC was very, very intriguing, interested. Yes. yes. So um, initially, my trainers and everybody loved me. Because you know, Ghanaians, we love foreigners, so people who come back from abroad. <laughs> and I, back then, I had a bit of a British accent. Now it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, everybody's darling. You know, everybody wanted really? to know. Who, yeah. Who's this girl? With oh, the out of my intake, there were about there was about thirty eight of us. I was the first person that was employed wow. from the yeah from the training school. And then I, I think after that, only three more people were employed. Yeah. Yeah, they're, so, they're quite selective, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. And I, we've heard a lot about the training program there. That it's it's, it's intense. Very intense. I lived in very... England for eleven years, but it was at GBC that I learned how to pronounce things phonetically. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. Yeah, we had very good trainers. Sam Yebwa, um, Madame Harete Chimensen, amazing broadcast journalist. Yeah, even Joe Latte trained mm. us on well, we sports say, oh, commentary. Over to you, Joe Latte. Yeah, Joe Latte. and at GBC yeah. training school, so you learn everything. Commentary. Mm -hmm. I remember um, during um, President Mills' inauguration, I was privileged to um, do the commentary on radio. Yeah, wow. with, um, oh, what's his name? This man with amazing voice. He does most of the commentaries. 
I forgot to say if, if I remember I mentioning okay. it, I told that guy. Yeah, I remember I did it with him, and yeah. And the director general called me afterwards because he loved the commentary because I was describing the outfit. I remember the wow. vice president, yeah, president. You did, like, so we're talking about <laughs> presidential inauguration yes. where we see all the pomp and pageantry and you were actually one of I the commentators. I was a co-commentator, yeah. And I'd only been working on radio for about four months at a time. Yeah. So, awesome. you know, and initially, I didn't want to go on radio. I wanted to go on TV. Mm -hmm. Remember, I wanted You're to be Oprah. Oprah Winfrey, Oprah. you know. But um, I was told I'm better on TV because I'm plus size. On radio, they said you should stay Sorry, on radio. Sorry, I should go on radio around that because they said I'm plus size and I'm not good for TV. And now when I go on TV, people will be staring at my chest. They're not listening well, time, to me. Well, times have changed, haven't they? Because look <laughs> yep. at the two of us. Look at two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I was taken to radio. So initially, I wasn't happy, but I started yeah. to fall in love with radio because I'd yeah. already started liking radio from London. Yes. Remember, yeah. And then guess the first two programs I hosted <laughs> on radio, a high life program. <laughs> you hosted a high life program. High life program called High Life is Alive. And then I had a talk show as well. So guess what? I did a talk show, but it was on radio. But it was on radio. It was okay. a relationship talk show, and we talked about health as well, uh, from me to you. Okay. So I did those two programs on GBC. Then every now and then, I would get to sit in for some of the um, well-established presenters. Okay. Yeah, and then I was producing the Drive Time show as well. So it was really going well. Good experience. Yeah, like, good experience. Very well-rounded. Very good training. You know, GBC is always a springboard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that leads you to begin and better things. Oh. I mean, it's a good place to work as it's well. It's a good place to mm. train. To yeah, train. It is. Okay. So you got to the GBC. Mm -hmm. You're loving the media thing. Yeah. You left GBC after four years. Why? I left it because I felt, um, um, what's the word? I felt, should I say underutilized? Yeah. Or a bit stagnated in your... Yes, group. yes, yes. Because with GBC, there's a lot of power play. Uh, there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. If you go on holiday, somebody <laughs> sits in for you. When you come back, most that's likely, it. that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember I went to China in 2011 for a one-month training in broadcasting techniques sponsored by the Chinese embassy. And my colleague's thought it was GBC that took me on that trip. So everybody was hating on me. When I came back, oh. one of my shows had been taken away from me. Really? <laughs> hey, babe. Mm. So you came back, so what did mm -hmm. you do? Your show is gone. So eventually, yeah, my show is gone, so I had just one show left. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my talk show was gone, so I was only doing the high life. And then eventually, due to competition and all that, people started complaining that I was playing more than high life and not the city high life. <laughs> you know, they wanted me to play Nana, Kwame and Pedu all the time, and KK Kabobo. Me too, I wanted to play Kojoentri, Daddy Lumba, and then they would tell me that's not really high life. Oh, oh, I remember I was giving a proper training on 4x4 four four beats and all that. I learned a lot at GBC, <laughs> trust me. So eventually, the high life show too was taken away. Other. And then for almost a year, I was going to work and I was getting paid, but I wasn't doing anything. I would hey. just go, they will say help with production. So I will just help somebody with a little production, stay there from 9 to 5, <laughs> then go home, and at the end of the month, I get paid. So... I don't, I, don't, I don't want to use the word useless, you but I just more. felt like, yeah, needed I needed more. more. So, uh, yeah, so after almost a year of, you know, all my shows being taken away, so I was just like a standby presenter, basically. Mm -hmm. I was producing the, 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 the drive show, and then okay. when the presenter is not there, that's when I get you to sit, sit in, in and all that. So I felt like there's much more in me mm -hmm. that I can do that I want mm -hmm. to give. And so when I heard about Radio XYZ opening in, tw in January 2012, I quickly jumped. I was one of the first people. <laughs> Okay. That was interviewed and employed at Radio XYZ, and I was the, one of the pioneers, mm. you know, of Radio XYZ. So that is why I moved, basically. I wanted to explore more. I wanted to use more of my talent. Right. And I felt that there's more I could give. And okay. also, the pay at Radio XYZ was like five times Respect. more than GBC. Wow. <laughs> oh, so that's a good motivator. So I had to go. Yeah, I had to make that move. <laughs> but hold up, Selena. Most people, well, I shouldn't say most. There yeah. are people who know you as Selena Beb, the designer. I know. This whole journalistic <laughs> life is news to a lot of people. I know. So how then did you transition from being Selena, the journalist, to Selena, the designer? Thank you. So um, in, uh, I moved to Radio XYZ in January 2012. Yes. And when I moved in January 2012, you know, like I told you, because for almost a whole year, I wasn't, you know, being really utilized at, utilized at GBC, I kept thinking of things. So I kept thinking, you know what, I can go into fashion. I've always been fashionable. Mm -hmm. Um, from infancy, if you see my childhood pictures, mm -hmm. yeah, I was like you, favorite slaying color was your, red. Slaying with your frilly socks. You, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen some of my childhood pictures? <laughs> I knew you were going to laugh. Anyway, so I've always been fashionable and I love African print and African mm -hmm. fashion, basically, African inspired fashion. So when I moved back to Ghana in 2008, I realized that the African prints were being used for 
all sorts of fashion accessories, mm -hmm. not just clothes. Yeah. And I love the African print bags especially. So I used to buy them a lot from a couple of designers. And whenever I'm rocking my African print bags and, you know, necklaces and bangles, I used to mm -hmm. wear even African mm -hmm. print bangles and all that, and beads like I'm doing now, people always compliment me. They'll say, oh, we love your bag. Where did you buy it from? And then people started asking me, do you make these bags? Because I was always holding always. one into my bag or the other, you know? So I, I started thinking, hmm, Maybe, maybe I can go into fashion class. I saw some of the young designers around at the time who, some of them didn't have fashion backgrounds, but they were doing the fashion thing and doing well. So I was thinking, okay, I don't need to have training. Maybe I can also mm -hmm. use my natural creative mind mm -hmm. to do something. And so, and I've always loved handbags. Because I've always been a bit on the, on the big side, I've always been a bit of, uh, yeah, plus size. Um, I always prefer to use accessories to make my clothes interesting. Oh, okay. You see what you're wearing now is black. Yes. It's a bit plain. Yeah. I put an African print or beads on it and then it will jazz it up. Yeah, it I was pops. expecting you to bring me one today. That's why I wore this nice plain I, black for I you. Know. So I could be a nice black <laughs> canvas, you know. I know. But what a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'll bring you one. No problem. Yeah. So um, I've always loved accessories, especially handbags. And I remember as a teenager, I was thinking, one day I have my own handbag range made of Italian leather, and I love Italian mm -hmm. leather bags. Now I love the African print fused with the leather, but yes. back then it was like all leather, rich leather mm -hmm. handbags and all that. So I started thinking, ah, I've always said I will do handbags one day. And you know, I'm using these African print bags and people are thinking they're yours. They're mine because of how often I'm always holding them and all that. Maybe I should try this out. Mm -hmm. So it just when I, 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 so it was a whole, um, how do I say, reinvention for me, you okay. know, move from GBC to Radio XYZ. I was earning a lot of money, so I started saving. I said, okay, if I'm going to do this thing, I need money. I need, yeah, because, you know, at that time, people already thought I was confused. You know, <laughs> do law. <laughs> <laughs> I've Journalism gone into too. media, I'm doing well. If I go and say I'm doing fashion, hey, trouble. So I was even scared to even tell anybody that I'm thinking of doing, mm -hmm. you know, doing bags or going into fashion. So I started working on Radio XYZ, but I couldn't stop thinking about doing my own handbag range. So I remember one day I started dreaming about it for like a whole year. I was dreaming that the whole world, people were holding my bags and wearing my shoes and wearing my accessories. So one day I had one of those dreams again. I said to my sister, this is what I'm thinking about. And I started dreaming about it. Mm -hmm. My sister said, ah, you can do it. Mm -hmm. I said, really? She said, oh, yeah. Ah, don't you believe in yourself? You're one of those people that I believe you can do anything you put to your mind to. And you've always been fashionable anyway. I know I always say thank God for my sister because if she had not encouraged me, she was the first person I spoke to. If she had said something negative, I'm sure it would have put me mm -hmm. off. <laughs> but she was very encouraging. And when I did my first set of samples, she bought for me my cousins. I have amazing cousins, very supportive. All my cousins were buying for me. And I'm like, wow. Okay, if my own friends family, and family yeah. believe in what I'm doing, it's then, true. yeah. Your first customers. That's, it took that's a while amazing. again before my parents came around because they're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> you've gone from law to media. You're doing well in the media. You've mm -hmm. now got a uh, you know, lucrative position. job or position that you're doing you and all that. You can't run from your calling, can you? And your and calling can be more Now you want one, to go into but, fashion. Yeah. So... But they were not so hard. It was almost like, okay, let's watch her. Because she said she wanted to do media. She did it and she was doing quite well. So maybe, but you know, okay. they were not too sure. And then um, guess what? I just said, I'm going to prove. I did it especially for my dad. I wanted <laughs> to make him proud. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to do it. And when I started, I was quite clueless. All I knew was I had ideas of beautiful designs I wanted yes. to do. But I was determined, you know. So quickly, I set off, looked for skillful people. Because I felt like if I'm going to do it, I have to do it top notch. Okay. It has to have great finishing because some of the ones on the market had poor finishing and I didn't want to be just another handbag right. designer. I wanted to make sure that I was above everybody else and I stood out and I was excellent. And so I, I came close. It took three months before I found someone who did mm. something close to the kind of quality I wanted. But as time went by, I make sure I trained myself and upgraded myself and wow. I, I made sure my workers were also upgrading themselves. You, you actually went to Italy. Italy to, do, to learn about, yeah. I mean, if there's any place <laughs> to learn about making leather handbags, it's Italy. It's Italy. So um, uh, after three years being in the business, in 2015, I went to um, do a short uh, bag making course in Italy, in Rome, precisely, mm -hmm. in a school called um, Academy of Fashion and Costume. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the best fashion schools in the world and I learned so much. 
in the, in, during that training, I found out that some of the letters I was even using for handbags were not for handbags. Mm -hmm. They were actually for shoes. The very thick ones are for shoes and not handbags. Mm -hmm. And I was on my workers, please, you have to sew it. And they're like, madam, the leather is too thick. I'm like, do it. You know, so now I know better. So okay. I, I check the textures of the leather. I know the different kinds of leather, the sheep one, the cowhide and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, so that, that was amazing. Learning and getting to know my craft better. So I always yeah. tell people, you know, you don't need to know how to sew anything to go into fashion, but it's good. It's helpful if you know. Yes. You know, some cotton, you should know how to cut patterns. It helps. It helps. It helps. Yeah. Okay, great. So you started with handbags mm. first, but you've, you've grown well beyond the initial handbag focus. Talk to us about the products, the various products that people can find at okay. Selena Beb. So I started with just handbags and then... Um, I have a bag called Kokui bag, by the way. Yes, there is a Kokui bag. <laughs> there is a Kokui bag. Yes. I had a whole stars collection. That's not the one they were showing on TV, but there is <laughs> but a Kokui bag. But there's a Kokui, bag. it's a boxy bag, it's yeah. A, yeah it's a boxy I had bag. a whole stars collection where I named bags after Kokui, Anita Eskin, Jocelyn Duma, Bella Mundi. Anyway, yeah. So, and then I added footwear. So I started making slippers yeah. and um, loafers. And then I started making men's stuff as well. I started making bags because I started with just ladies' stuff. Then mm -hmm. I started making accessories for men as well. I started making beads and all that. And then I stayed with just accessories for seven years. From mm -hmm. 2012 to 2019, I was just doing accessories. The bags, the footwear, the jewelry, tap cases and all that. And then in 2019, I decided to move to a bigger and nicer shop. <laughs> more plush, <laughs> way more plush than my old shop. And so I decided to add a clothing line. And the reason I, because I was trying to carve a niche for myself as the best African accessories designer. Yes. And from day one, my customers had been tempting me to do clothes, but I said, no, I do not want to do clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, my niche is accessories and I want mm -hmm. to stay there and I want to do it and do it well. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a jack of all trades and all that. And they're like, but we want your shop to be a one-stop shop where mm -hmm. we come and then we can buy clothes and we can buy accessories. So they kept asking and asking. And so in 2019, when I did that big move to the bigger shop i decided to add a clothing line mm -hmm. so what i'm wearing today is one of my designs it's one of your clothes. yeah it's from my new collection right. and so i and, and that's how come i added a clothes. so now yeah it's clothes and accessories and accessories so you can get yes. to the, the web shop you'll see everything from shoes handbags headpieces yes clothes all of, okay so we'll take a quick look at the shop opening that she told us about when she moved <laughs> from her first shop to the one she's currently in. Let's take a look at what happened at the opening of the new Selena Beb shop just a couple of years ago. Seven years of Selena Beb and we have a new home. Okay. Amen. 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 So you don't fear to fall in love But I go fight till the day I go call you mine ah. All day, all day Men come in, men come in, baby It's sweet to you, it's jolly Men come in, men come in, lady ah. Oh my baby, you're a queen Compliment me as a king Get the boy and swam up the door, 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 baby So that was a quick look at some highlights from the opening of the Selena Beb shop in Osu. I remember that day so well. It was my husband's birthday and you dragged me to come and model and MC in my pregnant state. I was heavily preg pregnant. Heavily pregnant that was the day I realized that you love me unconditionally. <laughs> Tell you about things we do for friends. I know. Thank anyway, you so much. No, but it was lovely. It was great. Lovely, lovely, lovely shop opening. Thank and you. since then, so much has happened. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll talk about the really big news that you, you had recently. Okay. And how you were featured in such a big way by like one of the biggest tech giants in the world. We're talking about Meta. And for, for people who may not know what I mean when I say Meta, we're talking about Facebook. Okay. Meta, parent company. What did you do? or what was done with you recently by Meta? Right, so um, Meta, like you said, parent company of um, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and yeah. then WhatsApp, yeah. Um, contacted me, little old me, <laughs> <laughs> and told me about this campaign that they started doing last year. So the campaign yes. is called Made by Africa, Loved by the World. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is every year, 
since last year, they feature eight African um, creatives and entrepreneurs because right. um, there were designers in there, there were tech people in there. Yeah, if it, there was a lady who even does food, you know, she's mm -hmm. into the food business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what they're trying to do is to um, showcase African's talents to the world. Great. Yes, so that's why it's called Made by Africa, Loved by the World. Mm -hmm. And last year's own didn't feature any Ghanaian. But this year, they ah, decided... Not even one? Not even one Ghanaian, no. How? No, I had people from SA, uh, Nigeria, Kenya, and a couple of other countries, but nobody from Ghana. So wow. I'm the first to be featured from Ghana, first and only person. Wow. Thank you. And so they selected me to be the first person that they highlight from Ghana. And yeah. so a short documentary was done about my brand. Uh, they had a whole crew come down to okay. ha have a meeting with me from the Met Office in London. And then we did a production. Look, and speaking of production, yeah. take a look at this. <laughs> It's bright and sunny out here in Accra. Today is about an award-winning fashion designer. Her iconic products are owned by international royalty. What you wear reflects the inner you, and as such, my designs are not just things, each has a personality of their own. Who am I? I'm the greatest. Who am I? I'm so flagrant. I started my fashion brand way back in 2012, from the back of my car. Who am I? I'm so flagrant. The people were gradually appreciating their own art and culture. They were understanding that they needed to write their own story. And so my designs are pieces of my own story. My family encouraged me, but the aha moment for my father in particular was when I was interviewed on the BBC's Focus on Africa program. He was excited to see his little daughter on TV. Bless him. My Dinkara collection was inspired by my late mother, and that went global. A Dinkara is an Asante set of symbols that represents popular proverbs, certain historic events, or even just a feeling. Most of my collections promote the Ghanaian culture, the African way of life. There is a phrase in our local dialect, Ampicheche, which means to filter out nothing. I am inspired by almost anything. Usually I get ideas on social media from people's posts on Instagram in particular. My sister once told me, Selena, everything you seek is within you and you can do anything that you put your mind to. As soon as I find something that is of interest to me, I sketch it down. Then I discuss with my team, because they bring my designs to life. I have received numerous awards, including two international awards in Italy. And I was also listed in Beyonce's Black Parade, which is a compilation of black innovative creatives. There are no shortcuts to the top of a palm tree. I am Selena Beba Kumensa, and I am made by Africa. Now that is international standard. So that is the feature that Meta did on our very own Selena Beb, the only Ghanaian to be featured in their Made, made by Africa, Africa, Loved by the World. That's amazing. Thank you. How, now, this was quite a project to film. Right? Yeah. It took, <laughs> it took like four about, days. Yeah. It was supposed to be two days, but we ended up doing four days. Oh, my goodness. And they came here to Ghana, filmed everything about you, and put this beautiful, beautiful feature together. It's amazing. Yes. Thank amazing. you. So and you've, yeah. They, they used a Ghanaian um, director, by the way. Let me give him a shout out. Kofi Ewa. Wonderful. It's amazing. Yeah. It was a beautifully produced project. Now, there's so much that you've accomplished already. One can only wonder what is next. What's Selena Beb going to come up with next that she hasn't already done? So what can we expect from you? Oh, my days. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm hoping to expand even further. I want to add more things to the range, what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, our hint is just one. 
I went to do with sunglasses. Oh, oh, you so. are, no, it's about time <laughs> because you are you're the only person I know who loves sunglasses more than me. <laughs> you love sunglasses. I literally have got one for every outfit. Pairs. Literally, yeah, craziness. But we'll look forward to that. That'll yeah, cool. and then um, I, I would love to open branches in other African countries as well. Mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. go into other African markets, especially Nigeria. And now that we've got the African continental After, free trade yeah. area. All the, hopefully the it will make it easier. And the, hopefully. Yeah, you know, hopefully. You never know. <laughs> it should be much easier. Yeah. I mean, but already Selena Beb is loved by the world and going out to the world to do amazing things. Yeah. And we're so glad that you were able to come on Breakfast Daily this morning to and hang one, out with one us. One last thing. Yes. It's my 10th anniversary in business. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so you. So this is 2012. 2012 to 2022. To so we're hoping to have a little celebration, hopefully in August, between August and October. Okay. We'll do a little celebration nice. and... Uh, you definitely be invited and your whole crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just not on my husband's birthday this time. You and Listen, Kweku, I'm not pregnant, but... You and Kweku David will model will come, for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, now you have to talk to my manager. These, these days, I've come on top, so... Eh. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the manager is. again? But, oh, his name is Godfred. Good morning, Godfred. Okay. I could talk for you. I see. Yes, Selena, always great to see you. I know, oh, I, owe you, I, owe her, so I owe her birthday lunch. What else do I owe you? Like, I'm not saying anything on so TV. So many things, <laughs> but it's okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. But always great to see you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm so much, proud Kiki. of you. I love you. And you are Aww. a Ghanaian superstar. And so we're very proud of that. Putting Ghana on the map in a big way. I'm going to get you. It's awesome. Thank you, Kokri. Thanks for having me. I love you too. You're so welcome. And, and we know you're inspiring a lot of people who are watching. You know, Thank so you. your entrepreneurial journey is an inspiration. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you. So that's our time with Selena Beb this morning. Check out on all social media platforms, Selena Beb, yes, right? Selena we can Beb. find Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. It's there. And of course, check out her video by Meta as well. Just watch it. It's really, really beautiful. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. There's a lot more coming your way on Breakfast Daily.